Today we are visiting the house of Eleanor Roosevelt. This house is also known as Val Kill, which loosely translates into waterfall stream in Dutch. Eleanor was a very important figure in American history. Not only was she President Franklin Delano Roosevelt's wife, she also developed into a very important figure on the world stage. Eleanor had a rather tragic childhood. She had three brothers and she was the oldest of all the children. Her mother died when she was only eight years old. A younger brother, Elliot Jr., only four years old, died a year later. Then her father died a year after her brother. At 14 years of age, Eleanor was sent overseas to a boarding school in England, which positively influenced her life. Her mother gave her the nickname of Granny because she acted in a very serious manner. In this class, we will discuss the comparative and superlative. Though this is relatively easy to understand, many native speakers often use this incorrectly. So, let's go back to the classroom and discuss the, the comparative and superlative. Hi, and welcome to class number five. In this class, we will learn how to use the comparative and superlative. First, please excuse the cast. I broke my arm playing soccer. I am the oldest player on the team, but far from the best and I probably should retire. Anyway, what is the comparative and what is the superlative? Well, the comparative compares two things. For example, my hometown of Hudson is big, but New York City is bigger. The Hudson River is long, but the Mississippi River is longer. The superlative expresses the highest degree of three or more nouns. Of all the rivers in the world, the Nile River is considered by most to be the longest. However, some people think the Amazon River is the longest. Do you know what city is the most populated in the world? Tokyo in Japan with over 34 million people is the most populated city in the world. Comparative and superlative adjectives are formed in many different ways, depending on how many syllables a word has. Usually, if an adjective has only one syllable, we add ER to make the comparative and we add EST to make the superlative. For example, clean is the adjective Cleaner is the comparative, and cleanest is the superlative. Cold, colder, coldest. Small, smaller, smallest. Young, younger, youngest. And tall, taller, tallest. There are some instances where there are spelling changes. If there is one vowel followed by one consonant at the end of the word, we often double the consonant. So, wet, wetter, wettest, big, bigger, biggest. If the adjective ends in Y, this often changes to I. So, dry goes to drier with the comparative, driest with the superlative. If the adjective ends in E, we simply just add the R or the ST. So nice goes to nicer and nicest. Large goes to larger and largest. There are a few adjectives that we have to use more or most with. 
even though they have only one syllable. For example, fun becomes more fun and most fun. We can't say funner or funnest. That's not correct. Real becomes more real or most real. Again, you can't say realer or realist. Right becomes more right and most right. And wrong becomes more wrong or most wrong. For adjectives with two syllables, we generally also use more or most. For example, careful becomes more careful and most careful. Bored becomes more bored and then most bored. But there are some two-syllable adjectives where you can either place more or most in front or place ER and EST on the back. For example, clever, cleverer, cleverest, or more clever and most clever. Simple, simpler, or simplest, or more simple and most simple. For adjectives with two syllables that end in Y, we generally drop the Y, add I, and then either ER or EST. For example, dirty becomes dirtier, then dirtiest, pretty, becomes prettier or prettiest. You can also add either more or most. So you could have more dirty or most dirty, more pretty or most pretty. Adjectives with more than two syllables can only make their comparative with more and their superlative with most. So, beautiful becomes more beautiful and most beautiful. Intelligent becomes more intelligent and most intelligent. Finally, there are quite a few irregular adjectives. Unfortunately, these are very difficult to learn, and I think the best way to do it is to have a lot of interaction with native speakers, listen to music, and maybe watch movies. They're very difficult to memorize, but they are essential to know. The first one would be good, better, best, bad, worse, worst, far, further, furthest, little, less, least, much, more, and most. And I'll put some more irregular um, adjectives on the website for you to um, consult if you need to. Since we are here in December, the theme of the tour is Eleanor and how she decorated her house for Christmas. Each individual person, she would choose things that she thought they would like or things that had meaning to them. She would have mementos of maybe some event that they did together, some outing they did. She would pick personal things like the kind of candy or cookies that they liked. And, um, and she would write each nameplate, each, each little place card with their name. She would write a personal message, a poem, or a little, a little riddle or something like that. Every, each one was individually written. In 1902, Eleanor met her future husband Franklin on a train to Tivoli, New York. They fell in love and married on March 17, 1905. FDR was a distant relative of Eleanor. They had six children soon after. Later on, Eleanor found love letters he exchanged with his mistress, Lucy Mercer. She stayed with FDR, reali realizing that leaving him would mean the end of his political career. In 1933, FDR was elected president of the United States. He served into his fourth term. Thus, Eleanor was the longest serving first lady. 
she changed the role of the First Lady, taking on a more prominent role, which included a high profile and even held press conferences. She had her own newspaper column called My Day. She was a vocal supporter of women's and civil rights for decades and was arguably the world's most influential woman, woman of the 20th century. She also focused on helping the country's poor, stood against racial discrimination, and during World War II, she traveled abroad to visit with U.S. military. Eleanor died on November 7th of 1962. She was 78 years old. She was buried at the family estate in Hyde Park. She was a revolutionary first lady and was one of the most outspoken women to live in the White House. As I mentioned, Eleanor had a very tragic childhood. Both her parents died before she was 10 years old and her younger brother, Elliot Jr., also died when he was only three or four years old. So right now we're heading to the town of Tivoli to look for the remains of people from her family. We found the church which Eleanor frequented when she was young. Now let's see if we could find the grave site of her father and her mother and the rest of the Livingston family. Eleanor Roosevelt is descended from the Livingston family. The Livingston family goes all the way back to the Revolutionary War. One of the Livingstons signed the Declaration of Independence. A Livingston also inaugurated the first president of the United States, George Washington. Eleanor's mother, Anna Hall, and her father, Elliot, are interred behind me in the vault. <laughs> One of the best parts of doing these classes is visiting interesting places and learning new things. That was the first time that I visited Eleanor Roosevelt's home and I enjoyed it a lot. So let's go over this segment that we just saw and ask some questions. Pat is back to help us. Okay, now we're back and I brought Pat along to ask us some questions about the section we just went over on Eleanor. So here's Pat and she's ready to go. Okay, go ahead. Well, um, what is Eleanor most famous for? She was known as one of the most outspoken first ladies. She gave press conferences and wrote a newspaper column. She spoke out for women's and minority rights. What was the name of Eleanor's news column? The name of her news column was My Day. How long did Eleanor Roosevelt serve as the First Lady? She was the First Lady for 12 years, making her the longest serving First Lady in U.S. history. How many children did she have? She and Franklin Delano Roosevelt had six children. What did Eleanor consider to be her greatest achievement? Well, after her husband passed away, she became chair or led the UN's Human Rights Commission, where she helped formulate the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which, put, which passed in 1948. Eleanor's home was known as Valkyll. What does Valkyll mean? Valkyll means waterfall stream in the Dutch language. Her home is located on a very beautiful piece of land. How many siblings did Eleanor have? She had three brothers. Did Eleanor have a difficult childhood? Why? Well, she did have a difficult childhood. Her brother died when he was only four years old and both her parents died before she was 10 years old. Eleanor traveled overseas to go to school when she was 14 years old. Well, where did she go? Eleanor traveled to England to continue her studies. She was sent there by her grandmother Hall. The experience had a lasting impression on young Eleanor. When and where did Eleanor meet 
F-E-R. They met in 1902 on a train from New York City to Tivoli, New York. How many terms did FDR serve as president? He served into his fourth term. He died soon after being inaugurated in his fourth term at the end of World War II. Eleanor is a descendant from the Livingston family. Why is the Livingston family important in the U.S. history? A Robert Livingston was a founding father of the United States and he swore in the first president of the United States, George Washington. Also, Philip Livingston signed the Declaration of Independence. He was born in nearby Albany, New York. How old was Eleanor when she died? She was 78 years of age when she passed away. She is buried at the FDR estate in Hyde Park. The comparative and superlative examples we discussed previously modify nouns. Though I prefer not to talk too much about grammar, it is important to note that comparative and superlative can also modify or describe verbs. So in this case, they would be called adverbs. So in this case, we have the verb to speak slowly. So I can say, I normally speak slowly. When I am teaching my classes, I normally speak more slowly. However, when I am talking to somebody that doesn't understand English very well, I speak the most slowly. Another example would be the verb to run. In high school, I ran fast. However, my brother ran faster than I did. In fact, in the 1500 meter race, he ran the fastest of all the competitors. Today we are in Poughkeepsie, New York. Poughkeepsie is located between Hudson, New York and New York City. Poughkeepsie has a bigger population than Hudson, but a smaller population than New York City. We are visiting two places today. The walkway over the Hudson, where we are now, There is another bridge behind me. It is called the Mid-Hudson Bridge, which opened in 1930 and is 3,000 feet or one half mile long. Thus, it is much smaller than this bridge. Cars can use that bridge. Walkway over the Hudson is the longest footbridge in the world. In the past, it was used as a rail car bridge. It was originally completed in 1888 and at that time was the longest bridge in the world. The Brooklyn Bridge, completed in 1883, is a little older. This bridge is 1.28 miles long and connects Dutchess County on the east to Ulster County on the west. It is 212 feet above the Hudson River. The Hudson River is the largest river in New York State. This bridge also has a 21-story glass-enclosed elevator. It opened as a footbridge on October 3rd 2009 and over 500,000 people per year use this bridge. The first foot race was held the next day, a 5k race with the fastest male time of 16 minutes and 26 seconds and the fastest female time of 20 minutes and 12 seconds. The race is now an annual event.
this bridge originally connected industrial northeastern states to the midwestern and western states. During World War II, it was a vital link for war freight traffic and was guarded around the clock by the United States Army. On July 27, 2011, a man committed suicide by jumping off the bridge. His body was recovered two days later. I hope you enjoyed that last segment on the walkway over the Hudson. I had a great time and look forward to going back. In this next segment, we will discuss Franklin Delano Roosevelt and also visit the FDR National Historic Site, also known as Springwood in Hyde Park, New York. Right now we are at the home of FDR, also known as the Springwood Estate. This is where FDR was born, lived, and was buried. FDR was the 32nd President of the United States and served during the Great Depression and World War II. He was elected four times to the presidency, the longest ever, but died in office at the beginning of his fourth term. FDR had a very interesting life. He was an only child. His mother was very involved in his life. FDR was one of the most remarkable figures of the 20th century. Not only did he battle with personal tragedies, he also had to deal with national and even worldwide dilemmas. In 1921, he contracted polio. He lost use of both his legs and almost quit politics, but with the encouragement of his wife, Eleanor, he continued. He later founded a treatment center for people with polio in Warm Springs, Georgia, where he eventually died of a brain hemorrhage. In 1932, the U.S. was in the middle of the worst economic depression in history. That year, FDR defeated incumbent president Herbert Hoover to win the presidency and then led the United States out of the Great Depression. FDR declared war on Japan on December 8, 1941 one day after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Hitler had already declared war on the U.S. FDR commanded a war which fought on two fronts, one in Europe and the other in the Pacific. War ended in the defeat of the Axis powers. FDR, as we mentioned, died at the end of World War II, soon after being elected for his fourth term. FDR is considered one of the greatest presidents of all time after George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. He is considered the sixth most admired American of the 20th century by U.S. citizens. He was also widely admired for his role in repealing prohibition. After his death, the U.S. assumed a greater leadership role in the world compared to its lesser role before the war. Behind me is the Presidential Library. FDR used the library while he was still in office. It is the first and oldest presidential library. Behind me here is his library. It's a typical library of a mansion of this size, but it is far too small to run a nation from. That was one reason why he wanted the library museum built. He needed a much larger office on site, and you will see it over there. But he would still meet with kings, queens, and prime ministers here. He met with Churchill here four times. And on his second visit up at Top Cottage, they discussed how far along the Nazis were in the development of the atomic bomb, and how horrific it would be if they got a hold of it first. So they came down off the hill and sat on either side of the desk here, and penned a memorandum of understanding to make the atomic bomb. And two months later, the Manhattan Project got underway. And we all know the results of the Manhattan Project. Ladies and gentlemen, I am standing six feet away from where the atomic bomb started. That's a rather sobering thought. Churchill was here that night for supper. And for an appetizer, Franklin served him sauerkraut and pig's knuckles. Now, 
Franklin's favorite beverage. Who knows who Franklin's favorite beverage was? Oh, yes. Martini, right. He'd make it with gin. It's English gin. Ladies and gentlemen, we see a bell here and a copper-colored cannon. Those were gifts to him from Teddy. Teddy knew that Franklin loved anything to do with the navies or the seas. And that was captured off a Spanish warship during the Spanish-American War. Now we're going inside now, folks. FDR was also interested in the environment and conservation, which began here on his family estate where he planted more than 400,000 trees. As president, he created 140 national wildlife refuges and established 29 national forests and 29 national parks and monuments. There are some other tidbits or useful pieces of information associated with FDR. First, FDR is famous for introducing the New Deal, which helped in getting the U.S. out of the Great Depression. FDR repealed Prohibition in 1932, which played a role in him winning re-election in 1936. During Prohibition, alcohol was illegal to consume. FDR passed bills for establishing the minimum wage in Social Security, which still exists today. FDR had an affair, meaning he dated a lady while he was married. He had the affair with Eleanor's social secretary, Lucy Mercer, which lasted up to his death. FDR's famous dog was named Fala which coincidentally in Portuguese means speak. I don't know if FDR knew that. Before becoming president of the United States, FDR was appointed assistant secretary of the Navy in 1913. He had a collection of almost 10,000 naval books and claimed he had read all of them. This experience helped him when he became president during World War II. After being elected president for the first time, but before being inaugurated, Giuseppe Zangara attempted to kill FDR in Miami, but instead killed the mayor of Chicago, who was with FDR at the time. FDR was famous for his fireside chats, where he talked directly to Americans via the radio. FDR's most famous phrase was, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself which was spoken during his first inauguration and during the banking crisis. FDR created the CCC, or Civilian Conservation Corps, which was the most popular of all the New Deal agencies and employed 250,000 unemployed young men to work on rural local projects. My grandfather, by the way, was employed by this agency. And finally, FDR was a philatelist or stamp collector throughout his entire life. And while president, he even worked with the Postal Service in designing stamps. In this past class, we learned how to use the comparative and superlative, and also looked into the lives of two of the most remarkable individuals of the 20th century, who happened to be husband and wife, Eleanor Roosevelt and FDR. Just one thing though, in the last section of the class, I erroneously stated that prohibition was repealed in 1932, when in fact it was 1933. Sorry about that. I don't want any fake news in my course, so I wanted to clarify. I also created a video segment for the comparative and superlative when Pat and I visited Europe a few months ago. 
but I will add this to a future class as I had so much to share with you in this class. Please also click on the website for additional exercises on this class. I will leave the link below. In the next class, we will visit the beautiful city of Montreal, which is located north of Hudson in Canada. We will further discuss ways to express the future tense. The next class can be downloaded for only $5. All subsequent classes can also be downloaded for $5 each. There are 10 more classes which can be downloaded, so the entire course consists of 15 classes. I will leave a link on this video as soon as, it, as the next class is ready. You should also subscribe to my channel to make sure you don't miss out. After this course is completed, I will also have a conversational class in English, and I will keep you updated on that. I hope you will continue on this exciting journey, and please let your friends and family know about this course. Please be sure to like, share, and comment on this video. This is very important so my class grows and more people can participate in open doors to learning English and exploring new adventures. Thank you and I will see you in the next class.